Hi everyone, I hope you are well. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani. Welcome you all to lesson 12, still on labor costing under the topic cost accumulation. Lesson 12 focuses on wage allocation. Having understood how to calculate the remuneration of an employee, the basic wage, the bonus, as well as the overtime, we would want to know how to allocate this wage, uh, especially to the number of units that have been produced by the employee. So, <clears throat> gross wage represents the total pay to an employee. However, not the total amount will be, will be part of the labor cost for product costing purposes. That is, some elements of gross wage will be treated as indirect costs. For example, the first item is overtime premiums. In any case, as I list for you the items you're going to look at under the wage allocation, the first one is overtime premiums. Uh, second one is idle time uh, pay. Third one is pay for indirect work. Fourth is the bonus. And the fifth is pay to indirect workers. Now, looking at the first one, which is overtime premiums, so, Roman 1, overtime, premiums, let me label it as A, number A, overtime premiums. What about overtime premiums? Now, they represent the additional amounts on normal rates for working overtime or working on another different shift, e.g. maybe a second shift or night shift. For shifts, premiums, uh, the amount is treated as indirect labor uh, cost and accounted for as overheads. These are just normal uh, uh, shifts. So the premium uh, is taken to be an indirect uh, labor. For overhead, no, for overtime premium, the treatment depends on the cost of the overtime. So first of all, on the normal working time, if there is some uh, premium, then this is taken to be indirect uh, labor cost and therefore it goes to the production overheads. But when it comes to the overtime, the premium, the over and above rate that uh, we are paying depends on the cost of the overtime itself. Why should you work beyond the normal time? Now, number A, it is, no, if it is, if it is normal to work overtime due to the general increase in production, then overtime premium is treated as an indirect wage and therefore charged to production overheads. This is to ensure that the units produced during normal time and overtime carry the same unit uh, labor cost. Now we are saying that under this, let's say Roman 1, if it is due to general uh, nature of production that it is normally for our company is normal for a company to work overtime because of our uh, production has increased therefore we have got to work overtime so that we are saying that the overtime will be taken to be actually an indirect overhead and uh, indirect cost therefore taken to the factory overhead so we want where whatever you produce within the normal time and what we produce during the second shift to have the same cost and like when we say that um, because if the second shift is having more cost so the products for the second shift will be sold at a higher value no we want where the sale uh, is the same for all the production 
and therefore the extra cost we incur during the overtime shall be treated as an indirect uh, overheads or indirect cost. Then the Roman two is if working overtime is as a result of customer request, then overtime premium should be charged to customer and therefore treat, uh, treat it as part of wages for the units produced uh, to the customer. So we think that uh, in the second one, if this is due to customer, customer specification, specification, so if it is due to customer specification, then of course the entire cost we incur on the order, we are going to charge the customer. And that means the premium, we shall charge it as a direct cost, where this one is indirect cost. Look at the difference. If it is the customer has given us an order, and that order we have to produce it even uh, uh, beyond the normal time, so in the, uh, on, uh, in the second shift. So the entire cost we incur, including the overtime premium, we are going to charge on the customer, therefore, is taken to be a direct cost. But if it is the nature of our company to work overtime because of the production, then we take that overtime premium itself uh, to the indirect cost as uh, overhead. Then uh, the third one, Roman 3, Roman 3. Overhead, not overhead, but uh, overtime premium cost by abnormal conditions, e.g. material shortage, machine breakdown, uh, etc. This is expensed uh, to the income statement. So you're saying that uh, if this is due to some other uh, causes, uh, let's say uh, abnormal abnormal conditions conditions like machine has broken down and therefore we end up producing during the overtime a uh, material has uh, uh, has maybe uh, maybe is not in the market has been exhausted in the market therefore when we get these materials we produce during overtime so we say that one is taken to the income statement this is taken to be on operating operating expense in the PNL will take to the PNL, meaning is not going to be is not going to form part of the production overheads. It is going to form part of the operating expenses. Otherwise, when we say it's indirect cost, it forms part of the production uh, cost uh, as as overheads. But this one is not production, and that is how we treat the overtime premium, the excess we pay uh, to the to the workers when they work beyond the normal uh, time. Then <coughs> the second one. So part B, this is idle time pay. So this is idle time pay. Now this one we had covered previously. So this is uh, previously covered. Covered. Now remember, in the idle time, we said that we have uh, the normal idle time and the abnormal idle time. When you incur or you spend more time, or you spend time without production because it's ordinary, it is normal, like uh, tea breaks and uh, some uh, time lost when you are transferring from one uh, branch or from one uh, machine to the other machine, that's normal. Then you have uh, the abnormal one, which is caused by like a long um, uh, duration. The machine has been um, not working. So that we take to be abnormal. Therefore, the treatment of uh, such uh, over overhead premium or the idle time in car, we say that is treated as far as uh, the condition is concerned, whether it is normal or it is abnormal. Then we have uh, the pay for indirect workers. So part C is pay for indirect workers. What about this one? Uh, no, not workers, but indirect work. Pay for indirect work. This represents pay for hours worked on overhead or on other jobs. Sorry, on over other jobs, the amount should be treated as an indirect work on the original work, or should be charged directly to its own job. We say that this indirect work. 
for example like um the way i'm maybe i'm lecturing that is a direct work but should i do another job or should somebody else do a particular task that is connected to this this one of teaching like now for example uh maybe somebody is there to clean the board to clean the uh the classroom or such or to assist now the lecturer to, uh, be able to deliver or uh, serve the, the students then we are saying that um, that can be an indirect work that indirect work we can say that uh, either is part and parcel of this job for example if myself i was to uh, make sure that uh, the board is clean and this taken to be or even the room is clean and everything is uh, is okay the materials are ready so if that is an indirect work so the amount of money i should earn there i should i can either treat it as part of the direct work or if it is significant i can treat it as another task so i have the first task is to lecture then i have another duty which is maybe to ensure that the materials are, are, are ready if the work of examining is taken to be so significant and it is not a part of the lecturing we can take it as separate job but if it is taken to be subsidiary to teaching or lecturing then we can connect uh, together and we say that the total amount that we we pay is for the direct and indirect so therefore it depends with the, how we treat and actually i would say i would say it is it's on the significance this is on the significance of the amount so significance of uh, the amount of work then we have um, the pay to indirect workers let's talk of uh, pay to indirect workers now this is where we i would now bring a good example concerning the person who is assisting me in uh, maybe delivering so if we have somebody who is being paid like now cleaning the board uh, making sure that the materials for the lecturer are ready um, maybe making some um, uh, maybe follow, following up with the students whether they have registered whether they have uh, made payment everything that is involved uh, with the students and he is not teaching he is not lecturing as the main job so we would want to know how we treat uh, such payment to him so let's see uh for example the supervisors uh or factory cleaners and etc this is treated as factory overheads however if they happen to participate in production the pay for the time of production would be treated as direct wage if these indirect workers are actually assisting in the main work for example i can can have uh let's say i can have um uh maybe an agent who can represent me when i am away so maybe like at at torio fella uh, when I'm, i'm away he is that is going to represent me then uh, the payment to that person can be taken to be part and parcel of the direct wage but if that person is not participating exactly in the main job maybe it's just some other odd jobs then that payment should be taken to be indirect and forms part of the factory overheads while my pay uh, when i'm teaching that one is taken to be direct so that it depends now with how uh, you treat and actually the connectivity with um, the main job if it is there is some close connection with the main job then that one is taken to be direct wage but if there is no close connection with, uh, with with such then that one you can take it to be uh, some overheads or either the indirect uh, wage then the last one is the bonus bonus it is an incentive paid to recognize employees efficiency during production now for individual bonus or for individuals bonus is part of direct wage as it can be traced to the individual job but for groups 
bonus or group bonus is treated as an indirect cost as it is not possible to trace uh, these to the individual uh, work. It is paid for the or to the entire group. So you say that um, it depends with the type of if it is individual and if it is group. Remember, you have not done a uh, group bonus, but you have done uh, individual. For individual, it's, you are being given this bonus because of the exact work that you have done. So we can trace this bonus you are being given uh, to the work that you have done. Therefore, this is taken uh, to be uh, part and parcel of uh, direct. But for the group, it is being paid not for the specific work that has been done by an individual, but it is paid for the entire group. And therefore, this one is taken to be indirect. That is something to note, eh? so indirect. So we need to know how do we treat these items of expenditure concerning the labor, whether they should form part and parcel of the direct cost, which is direct labor, or they should uh, actually form part and parcel of the factory uh, overheads or factory uh, or production overheads. With this exception of uh, abnormal condition that is going to the income statement and therefore does not form part and parcel of the factory uh, overheads. So with that, let's just look at some examples so that we can be able to understand uh, these. So the example, now the question is May 2005, question 3. May 2005, question 3. This has two parts, just part A and part B. So I'll do the part A. Then part B is what you are going to address these issues concerning the treatments. So the question reads, part A, are the company limited is considering the type of remuneration scheme to adopt for its employees. The following information is availed to you for your analysis. There is employees, Mambo, Saidi, Mbogo, and Zainabu. Actual hours worked, 38, 36, 40, 34, respectively. Hourly rate of pay in shillings, 30, 20, 25, 36, respectively. Output in units, product A, 42, 120, dash, 120 respectively. Product B, 72, 76, dash, 270 respectively. Product C, 92, dash, 50, dash, respectively. Then you have outputs for product A, B, and C. The standard time allowed for a per unit in minutes, 6, 9 and 15 respectively. For the calculation of piecework earnings, the company values each minute at a rate of shilling 0 0.5. Required, calculate the earnings for each employee using Roman 1, basic guaranteed hourly rates, and Roman 2, piecework rates, and Roman 3, Premium bonus, given that an employee earns the premium bonus at the rate of two-thirds of the time saved. End of the question, which is part A. Let's address part A first, then we come to part B. Now, in part A, as much as uh, we have been asked, Roman 1, the basic guaranteed hourly rates. So we are going to work with um, the... Uh, rates or the hours that have been uh, guaranteed, we multiply by the uh, rate per hour which are being given. We do not have the we don't have the guaranteed hours. We don't have uh, the uh, allowed hours. We have to, to to calculate. We have been given the allowed uh, time per unit, and we have been given the units that each employee has worked. And therefore, we need to have a working to determine this. So we can have a working this way. So we are going to have um, working or workings. We'll have uh, the 
employees. So first, let's have details first. We have Mambo. We have Saidi. We have Mbogo. And we have Zainab. So we'll be calculating as follows. To get the allowed time or the guaranteed uh, time, we take the output and you are being given already the standard time uh, for product A, B, C. So we'll be having here 